All right. Hi, math friends. We're back with day three of online learning, and we are on lesson 711 today. You should have brought with you a math journal, a pencil, and a piece of paper. And today we also need a ruler. So if you need to hit pause and run get a ruler, go ahead and then come on back. All right. We're going to start with our warm up, and you do not have to write this down, but I want you to think and decide whether the fraction I'm about to show you is greater than or less than one half. So let's start with zero halves. Is that greater than or less than one half? Decide, you can say it out loud if you want. Zero halves is less than one half. Two halves. Would you decide whether two halves is greater than or less than one half? Two halves is greater than one half. All right, a few more still deciding greater than or less than one half. One fourth, so you would imagine something broken into four equal parts and one of those, would that be greater than or less than one half? One fourth is less than one half. What about three fourths, greater than or less than one half? Three-fourths is greater than one-half. And four-fourths. Four-fourths is greater than or less than one-half. Four-fourths is greater than one-half. And we have a few more. This is a little trickier. So two-sixths. If you imagined something broken into six equal parts and you had two of those, would that be more or less than one-half? Two-sixths is less than one-half. How about four-sixths? Greater than or less than half? Four-sixths is greater than half. And finally, five-sixths. Five-sixths is greater than one-half. All right. Now you need your paper, pencil, and a ruler. Would you, on your paper, use your ruler to draw a line segment that is two and a half inches long? Partition or break up the line segment into one half inch lengths. How many half inch lengths are there? So on your paper, you're drawing a line segment that's two and a half inches long, and then you're partitioning breaking it up into half inch lengths and counting how many half inch lengths there are. All right, when you're ready, I'm going to show you what that would look like on your paper. So as you can see, here is a line segment that is two and a half inches long and across the top, you can see they've labeled zero, one, two, two and a half. And then across the bottom is where they've labeled the half inches. So, of course, zero is zero halves. One half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves. So the answer to how many half inch pieces are there? There are five half inch pieces. We can use this number line to create a number story. Here's how that might look. Caitlin has tube beads that are one half inch long each. When she lines up the beads end to end, they are two and a half inches long altogether. How many tube beads does she have? So this is a number story that matches the number line above. There are five five beads that could be lined up to make two and a half inches all together. We are going to practice using fractions with number stories today. All right, let me get rid of this writing. Let's practice with this. How many more beads does Caitlin need in order to make a bracelet that's six and a half inches long? So we know she already has five beads. And that got us 
to two and a half inches. So our first job is to think, how many more inches is six and a half than two and a half? Hmm. How many more inches is six and a half than two and a half? Six and a half is four more inches. So if she needs to add four more inches and each bead is a half inches, you're going to need to think how many half inches are in four inches? How many half inches are in four inches? Yes, there are eight half inches in four inches. She's going to need eight more beads. What is the total number of half inch beads that it would take? So we need to think if it took five to make two and a half, and it's going to take eight more to make six and a half, all together, she is going to need 13 beads. Because these are number stories, we of course will add a unit to our answers. All right, let's keep practicing using fractions to solve number stories. The next one says, four friends share five granola bars equally. How many granola bars does each friend get? Four friends, five granola bars. So I have drawn out here four granola bars, sorry, five granola bars, if you imagine each circle being a granola bar, and we need to share these among four friends. One way that I could think about this is I could give fourths out to each friend. So friend one, we will call this friend, gets one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. Friend two would also get one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. Friend three also one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. And friend four, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. So each friend gets five fourths of a bar. Another way we could think about this is to give out full bars first to each of the four friends. So if I'm giving out full bars, how many full bars would each friend get? Four people and they each want to get a full bar. Well, this person could get a full bar, this person could get a full bar, this person could get a full bar, and this person could get a full bar. So they each could get a whole bar and then they would have to share this last bar equally. How could they share this last bar equally? Hmm, they could each get one fourth of that bar, which would mean that each person would get one whole plus one fourth of a bar. Either way you say it is fine. They both mean they are getting five fourths of a bar, which is the same as one whole plus one fourth of a bar. Let's look at another one. TJ walks three sixths of a mile to get to school. Andre walks three eighths of a mile to get to school. Who walks the greater distance? So again, I have shown TJ's walk being broken into sixths and Andre's walk being broken into eighths. TJ walks three of these sixths and Andre walks three of these eighths. So if you look at the shaded part, this is three sixths, this is three eighths. Is three sixths 
or three-eighths the greater amount. Three-sixths is greater than three-eighths. So who walks the greater distance? TJ walks the greater distance, which means three-sixths is greater than three-eighths. All right, would you open your math journals, please, to page 246. 246. It says football party fractions at the top. I am going to go ahead and do number one with you here, and then you will complete this page on your own. It says use fraction circles, fraction strips, number lines or pictures to help solve these number stories. Make sketches to show how you solved. Number one, Tanya watched the whole football game. Micah watched one fourth of the game and Alma watched three fourths of the game. Who watched the shortest amount of the game? So if I drew a sketch of, again, we can use circles, but if you wanted to use rectangles, that would be fine too. But three people, the whole football game, this could be Tanya. She watched the whole football game. Micah, breaking that into fourths, watched one fourth. And then Alma, oh, that was a weird thing again. You can keep drawing your Alma without all these weird lines. I have to figure out why it keeps doing that. All right, Alma, behave yourself. Alma, breaking it into fourths, she's going to watch one, two, three fourths. So Tanya watched the whole game. Micah watched one fourth. Alma watched three fourths. Who watched the shortest amount? Micah watched the shortest amount with one fourth. You can see that this is the shortest amount compared to one whole and compared to three fourths. All right, so you are going to complete the page similarly and you are also going to work on the next journal page, page 247. Again, I'm going to do the first one with you. You can flip the page and do the first one with me, and then you'll complete the page on your, on the own, on your own. It says, the hole on a number line is the distance from 0 to 1. Each number line below shows more than one hole. Label the holes and then partition to locate the given fraction. So I want to highlight that this says label the holes and then partition. So number one, you can see it goes from zero to four. And so if I want to first label the holes, I would know that this is one, this is two, and this is three. Then partition to show one half. We said yesterday that one half is always, always, always halfway between zero and one. So I would break it here and label one half. You're going to do number two by labeling first the whole numbers and then finding two fourths. Number three, it says write a fraction below each triangle to show the distance from zero. So I can see that for number three, each of these little partitions is thirds. So I can see one third, two thirds, they've already labeled three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, and the green triangle lands at seven thirds. Would you do number four similarly? All right. Your job today is to go back, finish page 246 and 247, then 
math boxes, 7-Eleven, and then, and maybe you want to save it for later, Homelink, 7-Eleven. You've got this, friends. Remember, you can check over your work when you're done with a parent or adult, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.